Hey everyone, today we're going to cover how to use primitive shapes to model complex objects in Maya. This is my go-to workflow whenever I need to hard surface model complex objects, and I'll show you how I applied this workflow to the cyberpunk grenade I recently modeled. This tutorial focuses more on the overall workflow of modeling complex objects and is less focused on the step-by-step -step process. We will also cover how to analyze reference and how to break them down into primitive shapes so they are easier to model. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Every little bit helps this channel grow. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Maya. And if you saw one of my recent videos, I recently did a time lapse on modeling this grenade uh, from beginning to end. So make sure to check that out. But as I was modeling this grenade, you know, there was this one underlying theme uh, I realized as I was modeling it. And I realized that, you know, as I was doing these complex shapes, I said, you know, what's the what's one of the best tips I can give people as they're trying to to tackle uh, complexity? And that's really to break things down into simpler, more primitive shapes uh, as you're modeling. So you can see here, you know, I started here with a uh, basically a subdivided cube and these uh, cutouts here, these were basically just kind of stretched out cylinders, uh, cylinders at the caps, and then uh, I used that to, to get these shapes there. And you'll see that more and more, you know, as we go to this uh, clip portion over here, you can see that I started with a nice simple cylinder piece here that extruded out into multiple uh, different cubes, right? So, you know, we have another uh, switch here and uh, very easily to see that this is a cylinder extruding out into a cube, but then we have some, a complex shape that I used for, for this triangle piece, right? So this just happened over and over again until, you know, you get just a nice looking complex shape. So one of the pieces that I recently modeled uh, or after the video was kind of this opening here. Now again, I want to make sure to um, reference that I am referencing the uh, concept art from uh, Filippo Ubertino, who did a fantastic job. He is a concept artist at 3 3D Project Red, and he has a bunch of different grenades here. Now this can be applied not only to his concept art, but to anything at all that's that's uh, you know complex in nature. So if we go here and we take a look at this shape here, what I did was I went ahead and saved out basically the steps or progression that I took in order to create the comp that complex shape. As you can see here, you know, looking at the reference, this is a, you know, overall a cylindrical shape with uh, cube like extrusions, and then there's more kind of uh, cylindrical extrusions uh, happening all throughout, right? So, you know, the, the best route was to obviously start with a cylinder, and then I used what I just call guides, right? I do this all the time where I'll create these guides to kind of help me uh, visualize where my topology is gonna work around, right? So I have these cubes here, and then I have, this is what I meant by that extruded uh, or elongated cylinder. So I just have this cylinder here that's basically just stretched out uh, to create this shape. And what I did was also make sure to use uh, 36 segments uh, for, for the cylinder. I know sometimes I use powers of two, but since I was creating something with radio, it had six radial symmetry uh, here, uh, including this, uh, I wanted to use a nice easy number and 36 worked well. So I can basically uh, rotate this six times within 360 uh, degrees, right? I used, ended up using what's called a duplicate special to do that. And you'll see that, uh, you'll see me use that in the video too. But anyways, I went ahead and kind of cut out that cube-like shape here. And then once I cut that out, this is where it might look like a huge jump, but really this is all I did. Right. Remember what I said about just kind of taking that piece and you can see that basically I have these six segments. Right. So if I include these two right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that divided easily into um, the six um, radial symmetry uh, pieces that we have here. Now, I kept this one blank because that's where we had uh, this last piece. Uh, extruded of uh, you know via the reference so since I had that and I used this nice simple cylinder I was able to duplicate special and rotate around this pivot to create this nice looking shape here all right 
So just real quick, I can actually just show you if I duplicate this and move this up, kind of exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if I go ahead and actually um, look at this from the top view, you'll see that it's already set at the, the center of this object. So if I go ahead now and use uh, the you know, edit duplicate special with the settings here, you can see that it's going to have my last settings here. I'm going to rotate about the uh, Y axis here, 60 degrees. So that's 360 degrees divided by six. And then remember, I use the six segments here with 32 segments. So I'm keeping everything kind of nice and even uh, and 36 seem to work uh, the best. And then number of copies five, since I already have one. And then you basically just go ahead and duplicate that. And then there you go. And of course I can keep these as instances and I can continue to move and, and do whatever I need to there. So I'll go ahead and just kind of go back a few more steps. And then you can see how then I was left with uh, this shape here. So that's where, you know, even though it's starting to increase in complexity, I'm still able to clean and keep this very simplified, you know, the overall um, shape simplified. And it's pretty easy to manage once you get comfortable working with topology like this. But remember, I'm starting with this nice simple shape here and I'm using this as a guide, right? Probably, you know, I wouldn't even say challenging, but one of the things that I just had to make sure of is, you know, I was able to get these shapes uh, out of this uh, cylindrical topology. And you can see how I've done that here. All right. So with that, you know, I went ahead and did the last bit of uh, extrusion here and separation to kind of get this, this complex shape, you know. The good thing is, you know, I have the, you know, all my holding lines, all the topology, you know, we can take a look at the reference and it's pretty close overall. The only thing is I didn't add these last bit of extrusions here, but I think that's fine. I can easily add those uh, later. Um, but uh, you can kind of see how everything came together. You know, I didn't want to go for super sharp uh, um, bevels and chamfers and everything. You can see that the things are rounded pretty, you know, with a decent radius here while still giving it that hard surface look. And that's exactly what I was trying to achieve here. And it, I'd say it came across really well, right? So we still have these nice overall rounded corners here, and we still have these nice sharp corners of that uh, uh, initial cutout. And everything works well. You know, we have nice clean topology. If I wanted to kind of step back and redo something, you can see that all of this topology flows together pretty well. And I can easily remove uh, and cut, cut things out. Right. So and this, you know, I made sure to just match this this overall topology here. All right. So that was kind of that initial walkthrough of kind of how to start with a primitive shape and build up and using guides to help you. Right. And what I also recommend is for you to take a look at, uh, you know, real world reference and concept art. Uh, if we take a look here. At, uh, at ArtStation, you can see that you can basically go here and switch the channels to hard surface modeling. And you can take a look at all sorts of different models here that are on the, the front page, right? I already went ahead and grabbed a couple pieces here, but you can see, you know, this is from uh, Dimitri T here, he, you know, the same exact thing is can be done, right? Obviously you have a very simple cylindrical shape and then you can, you're just gonna add these objects, right? And that's where things like having these guides is gonna be helpful to help visualize topology. We're breaking things down into much simpler primitive shapes because you take a step back and you look at that, you're like, holy crap, that's, that's a lot of complexity here, right? Even, even something like this, you're like, wow, that's got all sorts of details. But if you break it down into a piece by piece and then you're just continuing to build up, um, it, it becomes much, much more manageable, right? So you can see these are just examples of just some really good um, hard surface models by these guys that I found these guys and gals that I found online uh, on ArtStation. And I would say, you know, I grabbed this one from Vlad uh, Sandberg here. And I really like this model because it, it's very similar. You know, uh, you can apply the workflow here, right? And what I did was, you know, just go ahead and drop this image into Photoshop, right? Or whatever, you know, graphic uh, tool that you have. And you can see, I do this a lot. And this is something that I have my students do even before they start modeling is, you know, let's take a look at these complex shapes. Let's break them down into simpler primitives, and then it becomes much, much easier to model. So you can see I have the main blue body, which is going to be kind of that extruded beveled cylinder here. 
Then I have this red shape here, which is another cylinder. And then I have another cube like green one. So you're just kind of building up, remember, just like, just like here right? You're building up and then you're going to be adding that complexity and then you eventually get a much, much more complex looking piece, right? So it's just a very nice exercise. You can see, yeah, you have, you know, my little sloppy um, circle here, but I was just using a mouse to quickly kind of illustrate what, what I'm talking about here. But again, you can see a nice simple cylinder shape, a nice cube-like shape, and then again, a cylinder being extruded from the side, right? So, here, you can see the same thing. This is actually very similar to one of the shapes that I've already modeled. You'll start with a cylinder and then extrude and then you connect to different, you know, uh, different varying height widths of, of cubes, right? So if we jump back to the grenade here, again, you can see that this is done all throughout the model, right? And again, my time lapse will show you exactly kind of what I'm talking about. And you can see how, you know, I'll start with a cube and then bridge these across and then create another cube. And we have a, a cylinder here to create this shape. And then we have something like this as well. And we're able to luck out, you know, on these flat surfaces. And that's kind of actually something I wanted to quickly bring up is that since we are on this flat surface, there are no artifacts at all, right? That's the one thing about hard surface modeling is you can get away with having triangles without, without any issues, right? So you have these triangles here and it doesn't cause any, any subdivision issues. Um, I'd still recommend staying away from n-gons, but you can see I pretty much have just triangles and just... Uh, just some quads here and some occasional kite quads, right? So don't be deterred by ha you know having that on your model. Uh, remember, this these are hard surface models, so you can get away with having triangles and um, a lot more kite quads because they don't um, soft body deform, right? So again, here's kind of how everything's kind of looking like when it's open. And again, I probably have a couple things that I want to clean up on this model before I go through and do the uh, texture uh, process. And that texture process is going to include, you know, taking all of this high poly detail and baking it down to uh, a low poly model. So I hope this, uh, this video you found helpful. Um, give me any feedback, uh, any tips uh, as well. You know, what do you guys do? Um, what does everyone do to kind of create these complex shapes? Um, you know, do you also try to use primitive shapes? And I hope you do. Again, it makes things much more manageable. And then before you know it, as you're adding and building up with these complex, or excuse me, these primitive shapes, you'll find that you're going to have nice, complex uh, shapes. And then you just kind of build build and build and all of a sudden you're left with, you know, you're going to have very, very detailed looking models. Um, so remember, keep things modular, keep things separate, um, model them exactly how things are made in the real life, in the real world, right? Uh, that's also what I tell students a lot of time. They they try to keep things combined as one object. I'm like, that is not, that is not necessary, right? You know, if you look at reference and you kind you kind of look at how things are manufactured and build um, and whatnot, you can see all of these things are going to be separate. I mean, separate materials are going to be fabricated like such. So that also makes your 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 life a lot easier. So you know, keep things modular where you can, uh, and when where you can't, you know, you'll just still combine things using the primitives. All right. So this was a nice, uh, short, sweet one today. Uh, I hope, again, this, uh, this format helped to at least understand this overall workflow um, to create complex shapes. So with that, as always, um, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share uh, if you found this helpful. And let me know down below uh, what your tips are and what you're hopefully looking forward to see next. All right. So with that, everyone, take care. I'll see you guys around.